you're located. Thanks for having me. Again, we're doing driving and improving product adoption, utilizing to Tango. A little bit about me. Um, I am a customer success manager here at Tango, and I've been here for about a year and a half now. It's kind of flown by. Um, prior to that, I was at LinkedIn for seven years and helped to grow the organization from a team of three to over 250 people globally. So quite a bit of customer success experience. Something fun about me is I love sports, so go A's, go Warriors. So today as we look across the customer journey, we're going to really be focusing on that adoption phase. So we've gotten past onboarding, we've got them up and, and ready to go, and now we need to make sure they're adopting the product. And it's not just right after onboarding, it's something we're going to continue throughout their cycle as they start to adopt new features and new functionality within the tool. Our agenda today is we're going to understand why is adoption important, why do we care about this, setting adoption goals, and then how to achieve those goals that you've set. So why is adoption important? The things we're going to look at, high adoption, that means my customer is getting high value, less likely to churn. We know that low adoption is the main reason for churn, so we want to be able to prevent that. Also, high adoption makes expansion sales um, much more easy for you to do, whether it's an upsell or um, doing your renewal. And then your bonuses, you do it well, and you're going to gain two things, customer advocacy as well as referenceable customers. So definitely an important thing to be focusing on. So setting those adoption goals, some things to consider while you're meeting those, thinking about setting those goals, license utilization. I have got 15 people that should be using it. I only have five. Making sure that all 15 are using the tool consistently. Usage frequency, is it something that they should be logging into every day? I expect my users to be logging in every day. Is that what's important for you? Should they be coming in three times? Maybe it's the time they're spending in each time they go in. And then using major functionality. Are they using the sticky things to make sure that they're coming back day after day and getting the ROI that they need to get from your product. So how do you meet those goals? One is visibility, and we're going to talk through that today. You need to understand how big is your product adoption problem? What segments of your customers are experiencing this problem? Is it by region? Is it the size of the customer? And then are you improving? You know where the problems are, and then are you improving there? Changing your customer's behavior, driving customers to use features relevant to their use case and timing. So you got to change that behavior. And then you need to change your team's behavior. You want your team to be focusing on the right customers and having the right conversations with them. If they're having a conversation with them, about goals, they want to make sure that they're setting the goals around license utilization or the specific reasons that they purchased your product. Are they using it? Right, so one of the big things we're going to focus on today is that visibility piece. So let's start there. Gaining visibility. Things that you want to be thinking about, easy segments for you to build out into Tango. How many of my accounts have not been active in the last 30 days? and leverage success plays to so then get my CSMs to start reaching out. Maybe I want to leverage campaigns so that I have communication going to them like, hey, where have you been? How many accounts have low license utilization? I know they're not getting the ROI they need. I need to really be focused in on them. Who's performing better than others? Is it tier? Is it region? Maybe it's tenure. Maybe my customers that have been with me over two or three years they're not leveraging it the way they should be. Maybe they aren't aware of some of the changes that you've made. How many of your accounts aren't using the main features? They purchased you for maybe reporting. Are they even using those reporting and alerts? Or are they just going in, touching one piece of the product and moving on? And then understanding if your adoption is improving. What are you going to focus on? What are we going to make better? And then are we doing that? Are we taking the right steps? So one of the things you can do is create a trend report within Tatango. You're going to want to remember that segments are the base for your report. So we're going to create two segments. 
One is for license utilization over 75% because we know that is where we want our customers to be. And then one for under utilization of under 40%. Those are my problem children, right? Not too worried about those in between right now. We're just gonna focus on the highs and the lows. And then being able to look at that trend over time. Is that trend going up? Am I having more people utilize? You can see here on the tail end, my, my utilization is going up. So that's good. I have fewer customers that are in that um, zone of not leveraging my product. And then we can also look at this based on different segments. Do I need to look at this based on my customer success manager, uh, contract value, when are they going to renew, things like that. The other thing we're going to need to do is to define important use cases. Okay, I'm going to use Tango as an example for us here. When we looked at the use cases for our customers, there's four main things we're looking at here. I need to know, is my customer using success plays? They've purchased this additional functionality. Are they leveraging it? The main use case for Tatango is that early warning system. Are they using it? They purchase revenue center, are they leveraging that? And then are they leveraging the campaign? And what you'll want to do is determine for yourself, write this down in a Word doc, maybe put it in Excel, and say, what are my main use cases? And then define what does good product adoption look like for each one of those use cases. So as a team, we sat down and said, what does it mean for one of my customers to be leveraging success plays? It could be the number of success plays they have running, or it could be the number of tasks the team's closing so I know that they're actually working on a task that's been set for them. For campaigns, do they have campaigns running? How many is that? So actually sitting down and saying, what does it look like when I have good adoption in each one of my use cases? And your success manager can help you work through that. Once you've done that hard work, the rest becomes a little bit easy to visualize within Satango. So what we've done is created a dashboard. You can see I've leveraged tags to help me with this. So we've created different segments for each use case. When I said using early warning system, I just created a segment that says show me my paying customers that have looked at a certain number of account profiles and all the other things I said would equal using. Applied the tags and then created a dashboard. So now when I do my one-on-one -on -one with Omer, I can say great Omer, I've got a lot of customers that are using success plays and tasks and the early warning system, but they're not really leveraging the campaigns in the revenue center. So that's where I need to focus, okay? The more use cases that they're using, the stickier it becomes. If I have a customer that's only using us for the early warning system, they're not gonna be as sticky. It's a customer I need to be worried about later because they may not renew because they're not getting the full value that I know they need to get out of Tatango. When I see that they're using three, I'm feeling good. I know that they're using big things. Now, pains is fairly new, revenue center is fairly new. So right now I'm just working on getting some traction, getting my customers to understand the functionality, and then we'll start seeing the adoption coming as long as I know where I'm at. So when I come back in a month, Omer's going to want to see more tags being attached to my customers. You want to make sure you're not losing the customers that are already adopting. Okay. I'm going to stop for just one second and see if I've got any questions in the chat panel. All right. Just as a reminder to everybody, this is um, a conversation, so feel free to use the chat panel for any questions. I'll be checking regularly so I capture any of your questions um, that you might have. So now that I've got this dashboard, I've turned it into a report so I can have a different kind of visual. The first visual is one that helps me focus on what accounts aren't using what I need them to be using. This is a way for us to see all of the accounts. So I know how many established accounts there are, and then I can see how many are using each one of these overall, or I can use the different segments to then narrow down based on contract value, number of users, CSM, health. Right? So now an easy way for me to visualize and see those numbers over time. I can see that I have growth under success plays and campaigns, but not under customer analysis. So I need to be focusing on making sure that trend line doesn't go down and it goes back up. Great. 
So let's talk about the next piece of this, and that's influencing your customer's behavior. So I know what I need to focus on, so now I need to leverage different ways to get my message out to my customers and to get them to start adopting the product. Maybe it's a feature introduction campaign. Those that haven't used this specific feature, I need to let them know what this feature is and how it's going to help them in their day. Adding the link to download to the video or to a tip sheet or to a webinar like we're doing today. Setting out a new user orientation campaign. Maybe it's that the users are new and they're not aware that they even have a login. So we need to communicate to them leveraging the campaigns in that way. My favorite one is the usage reflection, letting teams know how are they using the product, but not just at the user level, but also at the executive level. That You want the executive to also know, how is my team leveraging this? What are they getting out of it? Is my portfolio getting better? Is my adoption getting better? Maybe we miss you. Maybe it's going back to we're seeing that people haven't been logging in in 30 days, coming back and saying, hey, we miss you, come back. Um, my, one of my other favorites, I have two, is the usage reflection and the make hero. Everyone wants to feel good about what they're doing and they always want to be recognized. So being able to say, hey, you completed your first task might be one for me, or you sent your first campaign, that's great. Or maybe looking at a usage review quarterly and saying, hey, you're in our top 2% of users. You rock. Here's a t-shirt. And then if you're seeing that usage is dropping, reach out and ask for feedback. Product team over here really likes to get involved as well. So when we have new functionality, they look to see who's using who's not so they can get feedback on what's going on and where did we miss, what did we do great at, and what can we do in the next um, iteration of it. And this is what campaigns can look like. Um, here's the hero one, right? You completed your first task, great, as well as the one for your success beats, your um, usage reflection, right? So get talking to your customers, drive them back to you, personalize it. You'll notice that the webinar emails come from Cecilia. If you're Cecilia's customer, they come from me if you're mine. So always making sure you're sitting in front of them with the relevant information and attaching goals to those. So what is it you want to accomplish? Is it that you want them to start closing more tasks? What is that? And then tracking that goal, making sure you're hitting it, and then retargeting for those that you're not hitting those goals on. So before I move to the next segment, I just want to double check. Looks like we're on track. Great. So now it's about changing your team's behavior. It's very easy for me to get campaigns and communications out to my customers, but we also need to change the team's behavior. We need to automate and implement and enforce process. A great way to do that is leveraging your success plays. Um, let's stick there for a second. Usage drop, maybe the champion has stopped using the low license utilization that we talked about earlier. And then, you know, like making sure you want to focus on maybe adoption campaigns, invite for training and measure results. We're going to go back to the campaigns there. But making sure the team's aware of what the priority is and then enforcing that with them. Focusing on the right accounts and having the right conversations. You don't want to call an account and say, hey, you haven't been using when they are using, right? You want to make sure you're talking about the right thing. What were their goals? What were they looking at for ROI? Making sure you're focusing on those metrics. <clears throat> Visibility and competition. I don't know about you, but around here, we get pretty competitive. We were in Sonoma last week. And let me tell you, there's some serious competition going on at the winery. So I know my team's competitive. Set some goals, set up some team comparisons, who's got the best you know, change in product adoption, who has the most people adopting a specific use case that you're focusing on. So definitely drive some of that competition. We had a competition yesterday, and Cecilia was sweeping it. So I know she's competitive. And then lastly, compensation, right? So making sure you're rewarding the team for the right things that you're focusing on, whether it's your MBOs, the quarterly bonus, or those Amazon gift cards that we were all competing for yesterday. Great way to do that, automating your workflow. In this case, I'm using license utilization. You can do the same things with those product use cases that we were focusing on earlier where we have the dashboard. Those who don't aren't meeting, we want to get a, a workflow out. So thinking about your customers, Focusing on those high value customers 
and saying, great, I want my CSM to do what when this happens? Does it make a call? Is it to do a training? What are those things that I need my team to do when we see this action happening or not happening? Okay. So what's next? One is visibility, creating your segments and reports to understand your product adoption. Where are you at? Where are the gaps? Where are your problems? And where are you succeeding? Don't forget about that part. Influence your customer's behavior. Set up campaigns to educate and drive behavior, and then changing the team's behavior. Help them to focus on the right things and automate workflows. Okay? So that ends the slide portion. I'm going to go ahead and we can go into the products and I can show you how I created those. But I just want to check in with everyone and see what questions do you have? Is there anything specific you would like me to focus on showing you within Tatango? Do you want me to start with segments? Or would you like to do reports? I'm going to go ahead and watch for your chats to come in to let me know where you'd like me to focus while I move into Tatango. Oh, so there's a question that came in, um, actually, Robin, let, let, me, let me read it to you. So um, when we're looking at kind of the segments and the tagging piece, um, the using dashboard columns, someone's asking, this mm -hmm. consider, would this consider for you to have purchased each of those features? Um, so I, I think actually it can, and what you would need to do is, is actually infuse the logic when you actually create that segment, mm -hmm. so you can actually have an attribute that you sent to the Tango letting us know which product they purchased so that when you build your definition, you can say, um, you know, account A purchase product Z, and then from there you can refine and define what that segment should look like. Exactly. So if you want to, especially if you're in hierarchy of multi-products, you want to look at each product and say, so um, one of my customers says sales max and margin max. So we're going to sit down and we're going to look at sales max and say what is adoption for that. We're going to look at margin max and understand what's adoption for that. So it could be different based on the product that they're buying, or it could be based on the tier. If I'm in tier one, I may not have everything. I might just have the early warning system and using TAP, where if I have the enterprise package, then I'm going to be measuring different things. So very easy to let us know via an attribute what they have access to, and so building out those dashboards based on what they have so we know that we're monitoring the right things. Also lets you know who doesn't have something that you might want to be reaching out to. Um, to do an upsell. Thanks, Robin. There's a quick, um, someone does want to go want to see the, the dashboard building process. And also, I just shared there was a question earlier, and I sent out a hot tip that actually went into the details of how to build uh, something like that, like the map that uh, Robin showed earlier that applies the tags. So I can actually share that with the whole team. I'll, I'll put it in the chat box so you guys can grab it from there uh, if you need another quick tutorial after the webinar to review it as well. Great. So what you'll want to do is define your segment. So typically when I work with my customers, I'll kind of do an Excel spreadsheet that allows us to kind of do erase easy. But what you'll do is just come in and create your different segments. So in this case, I'm going to say my status type is paying. And then what does it mean to adopt? Let me pull up my activities here. So in this case, it's all about um, documents and reports. So I want to make sure that they're creating reports. And I need them to do so many in, say, a month. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. Let's see what I get. I'm in a demo instance. Great. So I know that if my accounts are creating 10 reports in a month, that means adoption. It may be a shorter time frame for you, so it's whatever makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and save my segment. So I call it Using Report. And then we can put it in our folder. And then I'm going to create tagging. So what I'm going to do is say, if they're using reports, I want them to get this tag when they enter the segment. And I want to remove this tag when they leave the segment. So if they leave, they lose that tag because that means they're not adopting anymore, right? And I'm going to go ahead and save the segment. Now, one thing to remember is just because I turn that trigger on, the 22 accounts that are in my list don't have that tag. 
So you want to make sure you come in and check this box next to name and select all and say add tag using report. Make sure we're consistent and hit add tag. Now all the accounts that are currently adopting reports have that tag attached to them. And then as they come and go, the tag will either be added or be removed. Don't forget to turn your trigger on once you're done. And then now you're all set. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of my use cases. And then what will happen is, once I've got everybody tagged and all my use cases decided upon, I'm going to go ahead and create a different segment. And, okay. and what we're going to do is instead I'm going to start adding columns down here. So now I'm going to do, love this new search feature when I'm creating the columns. It's so nice. See if it's in here yet. I think I'm a little bit faster than the system today. But once a tag becomes available, what I'll do, I'll just pick a different one for right now since my tag's not in there yet, is it'll actually give me all the customers that were tagged with using reports. And then that way I can see who doesn't have the tag and who does. And then I would just add a column for each of my use cases, just like I created all the segments and did those tags. I do the same exact thing, and that'll be just like my screenshot once you're done. Okay? But don't forget to do your baseline tagging when you're doing that. I'm just moving a little bit faster than the system today. And then don't forget to activate your trigger so that your tags are coming on and off. Okay? And you can always follow a list. So another trigger that you can set is an email. So if this is for... Um, your main use case, maybe a five, but there's one that you're really focusing on right now. You can also have an email go out to you so that you're told when someone is coming off of the list as well because you might want to know who came off my list. It's a great thing to um, leverage as well on the account side. Okay? To create the report, once all your segments are created, then you can come in and leverage your report. Okay. So what I did was you just pull in your three your list of each use case. So I created this yesterday. I've got my early warning system, success place campaigns. I could also add in a new segment for using report, okay, it's going to be a beautiful pink color. And then down below, I can see how I'm doing in each one of those adoption use cases. Is it going up? Is it going down? Am I staying the same? And then down below, I've brought in my breakdown. How do I want to look at this? Do I need to look at it? Do I want to look at Cecilia's accounts? How are they doing? Or do I want to look at specific contract values or health? You can decide how you want to look at that and see where the problems are and where you're gaining. Okay. So great question. Do you have others? Yeah, we have a couple more. Um, so someone's asking, um, how do you suggest addressing low license utilization without pointing out that they're paying for seats they aren't using? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I would say I talk to them so maybe they don't realize that they don't have all the seats allocated. So that's one thing to look at. Did they buy 15 seats and they only assign 10? Um, maybe they didn't get the executive on there. Maybe there's a couple people that got hired and somebody leaves. So just trying to find out. It's also going to tell you what's going on with their business. Is their license utilization low because people have left or because they're not doing as well? You're going to want to know that because that's a turn risk for you. And it could just be lack of education. It's like, hey, I see that not everyone's using it the way that you expect. Why don't we do some training for the team? It lets them know you're on top of it and you're paying attention and you want them to be successful. So that's how I've approached it in my work. Thanks, Kevin. Um, there's another question also. Uh, someone's asking if, we, if they have access to dashboards for wall boards, something they can readily put up on the wall screen. I think like sharing kind of the dashboard and a, um, like a monitor type of thing. Yeah, I don't, not in a segment or a report. I, I think what you're, and let me know if I'm incorrect, but if I go into the team console under executive console, 
there's this little TV button up here to the right. This I know when you push it, it will go to like a wall board and you can see it up on a screen so you can see where everybody is with their tasks and their touch points and their account coverage and where their health is and their portfolio score. We also have the same thing under activities. If I go into today, they'll have that same TV button there as well. There isn't one for segments, so you'd have to do a different kind of screen share for that. But we do have the TV button in the activities and in the team console. Great. Thanks, Robin. So I think um, we do have a minute or so to collect any last remaining questions. Um, if not, then you know we're going to wrap it up, and we're going to thank you guys for your attendance this morning, and we're looking forward to seeing you again at our future sessions. There's a weekly webinar now every Thursday, and then um, you know there's also some other sessions that uh, we'll be announcing soon. So. Uh, I'll let Robin kind of finish up, and we thank you for, for coming this morning. Yes, thank you, everyone. Don't forget to reach out to your success manager. That's what we're here for. We want to help you be successful. So if you want any help building out 